This lesson deals with a second order low pass filter. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 26. Given this series RLC circuit, could you solve for V out in terms of V in? V out is just a voltage divider with the impedance 1 over SC divided by R plus SL plus 1 over SC times V in is V out. So V out over V in then is just a ratio of the impedance of the capacitor over the sum of the impedances. Let's multiply the numerator and denominator by SC. So I get a 1 in the numerator. I'll get an SRC term, I'll get an S squared LC, and I'll get times this term is equal to one. Let's divide numerator and denominator by one over LC. In the numerator then I have one over LC, dividing through by LC, I just get one times S squared, and then I have RC divided by LC, the C's cancel, and I get R over L, and then I'm gonna divide one by LC. So I get one over LC. Now besides the eight forms that we had, there are other combinations of the forms that have special names. This particular one is called the low-pass filter equation, and it has the general form of H naught omega naught squared over S squared plus omega naught over Q naught times S plus omega naught squared. Given the three constants, omega naught, H naught, and Q naught, we can actually specify the behavior of the filter. We'll take a look at that in the following page or so. I'd like to solve for the value of those three constants, omega naught, H naught, and Q naught, in terms of the R, L, and C of my circuit. And that's shown below. This term here has omega naught squared, and that would correspond to 1 over LC. So we could then quickly solve for omega naught is 1 over the square root of LC. Now the term H naught omega naught squared here is part of what this is, 1 over LC. So I want to extract out the H naught term since I know what omega naught is. If I take this term H naught omega naught squared and I multiply it by 1 over omega naught squared, then I get H naught. So this is the term 1 over LC. And then if I take this term and square it, and take its reciprocal, I have 1 over LC. This cancels with this, and I just get 1. Likewise, the value of Q is embedded in this term, and so omega naught over Q naught is equal to R over L. So if I take the reciprocal of that, Q naught over omega naught, and multiply it by omega naught, they cancel and I get the value of Q naught. So the reciprocal of omega naught over Q naught is 1 over this, which would then be L over R, and then omega naught is 1 over squared LC. Here, let me write this as the square root of L squared, and then divided by LC. The L squared and the L cancel, and so I get 1 over R square root of L over C. So given a filter with values of R, L, and C, I can then calculate these three constants, omega naught, H naught, and Q naught. For filters, the magnitude response is usually the most important. So let's sketch the Bode magnitude response of our transfer function. The first step is to plug in S equals J omega. So our general form then is H naught omega naught squared divided by S squared, which is now minus omega squared. And then we had S times omega naught over Q naught, so replace S by J omega. And then we had the constant omega naught squared. To make this look like our form 8 denominator, I need to pull out this term. So I'll pull out an omega naught squared, I'm left with a 1. And then this term is minus omega over omega naught squared. And then this term, when I divide by omega naught squared, it cancels with one of these omega naughts here. And so I have J omega divided by omega naught Q naught. The omega naught squares cancel. So I'm left with H naught divided by 1 minus omega over omega naught squared plus j omega over omega naught q naught. This is our form 1 and this is our form 8. So let's sketch those. So 20 log of h naught is the dotted line. And then the form 8 has an omega naught at a value here. And we're going to be 0 dB per decade below that. And above it, minus 40 dB per decade. Now adding these two up is going to lift up this form 8 to the level of h naught. Let's sketch in the actual curve showing a value for q naught less than 1. So when Q naught's equal, we hug the asymptotes around the break frequency. In all cases, for all values of Q, we hug the asymptotes away from omega naught. For our circuit, as the frequency gets lower and lower, we're approaching a gain of H naught. But for our RLC circuit, we show that that was equal to 1, that we should be 0 dB. For high frequencies, we're decreasing at a slope of minus 40 dB per decade. We're really approaching minus infinity dB as the frequency approaches infinity. And minus infinity dB is a gain of 0. So this circuit's passing low frequencies, and it's blocking or attenuating high frequencies. That's why we call it a low-pass filter. Let me also go back to the original schematic and show you how to also get some of these same ideas. For very low frequencies, as you go lower and lower, the impedance of the inductor is SL, so it gets smaller and smaller as S shrinks. In the limit, it becomes a short circuit. The capacitor's impedance is 1 over SC, so the frequency gets lower and lower. This becomes a number divided by 0, which is an open circuit. With an open circuit, no current flows, so there's no drop across here. So the output voltage is equal to drop across here, which is like a short, so zero, minus zero plus Vn. So the output equals the input. That's what we're seeing in our Bode plot, H naught equal one. 
All right, now let's, let's do the opposite. Let's let the frequency increase. And the impedance of the inductor is SL. Frequency goes up, this becomes an open circuit. And this becomes one over SC. A smaller and smaller impedance becomes a short circuit. Now they're not really truly opens and shorts, but low values and high values. If you have a series combination for a voltage divider, and one of the elements is much bigger than the others, then most of the input voltage is across that element. That's going to cause a current to flow that's equal to Vn over SL. Now that current is going to multiply the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 over SC, multiplied by that current. And now I have a result that says that my output's approaching 0 as 1 over S squared, slope of minus 40 dB per decade. A visual way of looking at that Bode plot of the next page, but doing it on the schematic, looking at the extremes of frequency. Let's consider an example with values for our R, L, and C in our low-pass filter. Here I've got R of 10 ohms, L of 200 microhenries, and C of 3.9 microfarads. Now besides being a low-pass filter, this is also a design for a hiss or a scratch filter. Hiss is the high-frequency noise that you'd hear on worn tapes. Likewise, if you have scratches on a vinyl record, this can also create high-frequency noise. Let's first calculate the value of omega naught and Q naught, and let's use P-spice to plot our Bode plots of magnitude and angle. And lastly, let's let our input be a 1 volt cosine wave at 1 kilohertz and a 200 millivolt cosine at 20 kilohertz. This can represent our audio signal and actually our noise. Now let's predict the value of V out as a function of time using our results of our Bode plots. And then finally, let's even verify the time domain behavior using PSPICE. From our calculations in two pages earlier, omega naught was equal to 1 over the square root of LC. So given the value of L and C, that turns out to be 35.8 kiloradians per second. If you factor out a 2 pi, that's 5.7 kilohertz. So we're in the audio band. The value of Q naught was 1 over R squared L over C. And for the values of R, L, and C, that turned out to be 0.716. Roots of our equation are actually complex conjugate. Whenever Q is less than or equal to a half, the roots are real. So let's take our circuit, give it a title, so about low pass Hiss filter. I have an input between nodes 1 and 0. AC input with a value of 1, angle of 0. R is between 1 and 2 with a value of 10. L is between 2 and 3 with a value of 200 microhenries. C is between 3 and 0 with a value of 3.9 microfarads. Plot the AC response from 100 hertz to 100 kilohertz. That's going to be three decades. Numbers from 100 to 1K to 10K to 100K. If I put 50 points per decade, that gives me 150 points on the screen. The results are shown on the next page. So let's just take a look at those. I measured the gain at the frequencies of 1 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz found that the gain was 0.027 dB, so very close to a gain of 1. And then the gain at 20 kHz was minus 21.8 dB. Likewise, the phase angle was minus 14.189 degrees at 1 kHz and a minus 157 degrees at 20 kHz. Plotting the output voltage, which is actually node voltage 3, and the transfer function is the gain, which is V3 divided by V1, but I made V1 equal to 1, just to make it a little bit easier. And likewise, the phase angle of the transfer function is the phase angle of the numerator minus the phase angle of the denominator, but the phase angle of the denominator is zero degrees. Now, I'm going to take these values and go back to page 28. So from the previous page, I found that the magnitude of the gain was 0.027 dB. Now that's going to equal 20 log of the magnitude of our transfer function. So take this and divide it by 20, and then raise both sides of the equation as the power of 10. We can then solve for the value in non-dB. That turns out to be 1.003. And of course, the angle was 14.189. Doing the same thing at 20 kilohertz, I had a gain of minus 21.8 dB. 10 raised to the minus 21.8 divided by 20 is 0 0.081. And the angle is 157 degrees. There are signals that are in our audio band. And low enough, we're seeing a gain of almost 1. As we get to the upper end of the audio band, which is in this case around 20 kilohertz, we're seeing that our gain is much smaller. Let's see how that impacts our time domain signal. So let's even predict what's going to happen in the time domain given the Bode plots in the frequency domain. Let's take our example now and let's run it in the time domain. Have the same circuit again, but now I'm going to make my input a time domain function. I have a 1 volt cosine at 1 kilohertz, so average value of 0, amplitude of 1 volt, frequency. This is the time delay. This is actually an exponential factor. And then here's our phase shift. Like we did before, we can create a cosine wave from a sine wave by shifting at 90 degrees. Did the same thing for the second cosine function at, with an amplitude of 200 millivolts at 20 kilohertz. Now what I did here was I took the original circuit, and took node 1, and then added a fourth node. Here's my voltage V sub A and V sub B. And what I've got now is the summation of two cosine waves. What I want to show is that 
when we're below the corner frequency at 5.7 kilohertz, so we're going to pass that signal, and that the signals that are above 5.7 kilohertz are going to get attenuated. I can actually predict the results from the Bode plots that I have, because I know what the transfer function is. My input is a 1 volt cosine, and I have a gain of 1.003. I'm going to multiply the 1, same frequency for the cosine, and then my phase shift is going to be a minus 14.189 degrees. For the second signal, the gain is 0.081, and the amplitude of the noise is lower than the audio signal, which could be typical, and the cosine then of 20 kilohertz, and then the angle of 157 degrees. The angle's not going to play much of a role, but the magnitude is. So look what happens here, that my signal is attenuated. The 0.2 was smaller than the 1 volt, but it got multiplied not by a gain of roughly 1, but a gain of 0.081. I'm passing the audio signal, and I'm attenuating or blocking the hiss or noise signal. Let's take a look at the output on page 30. I plotted the voltage across the first source. So you can see that I had a 1 kilohertz, 1 volt wave. I always like to check that to make sure I made a typing mistake. And then from node 4 to ground, I've got the 200 millivolt cosine at 20 kilohertz. A lot more cycles per second than this one. This is my noise. If you look at node voltage 1, it's the sum of those two. What a noisy waveform would look like in lab. And here's my output voltage as a function of time. You can see here that the 1 kilohertz wave is coming through. There's a little bit of phase shift, and it's reaching steady state. But the noise signal is seeing a gain much less than one. And so you can still see it there, but it's attenuated dramatically. So we're able to bring in sound and noise to our circuit. And we're just letting out the sound come out of it. And this is an example of a low-pass second-order filter with complex conjugate roots.